In this series, Seeing World History with New Eyes, I have looked at events that have taken place in our historical narrative in the years between 1945 and 1986 so far. I'm giving an overview of modern history with an eye towards uncovering the patterns that give insight into the world we live in today. I'm going to look at what took place between 1987 and 1989 in this video. My name is Michelle Gibson. Now let's see what happened in the year of 1987. On January 4th, an Amtrak train en route from Washington to Boston crashed into a set of locomotives without freight cars that weren't supposed to be on that line at Chase, Maryland, in eastern Baltimore County, killing 16. At the time of the collision, the Amtrak train was traveling at a speed of 108 miles per hour, or 174 kilometers per hour. The roll-on, roll-off cross-channel ferry MS Herald of Free Enterprise capsized off Zeebrugge Harbor in Belgium on March 6, killing 193. The eight-deck car and passenger ferry was designed for rapid loading and unloading and had no watertight compartments. The ship left the harbor with her bow door open, and the sea immediately flooded the decks. Within minutes, the vessel was lying on its side in the water. The cause was attributed to a boatswain that was sleeping when he should have been closing the bow door. On April 21st, the central bus station bombing took place in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and killed 113 civilians. It was a terrorist act attributed to the Tamil Tigers. LOT Polish Airlines Flight 5055 crashed into a forest just outside Warsaw on May 9th, killing all 183 people on board. It was the deadliest aviation disaster in Polish history and the cause was determined to be the disintegration of the engine shaft due to faulty bearings, leading to an uncontained engine failure and onboard fire. On May 17th, the USS Stark was hit by two Iraqi-owned Exocet air-to-surface missiles, killing 37 sailors and injuring 21. The naval vessel was part of a Middle East task force patrolling off the coast of Saudi Arabia near the Iran-Iraq exclusion zone during the war between those two countries. The Hashimpura massacre occurred on May 22nd in Meerut, India. It was an incident of mass murder in which 19 members of the Provincial Armed Constabulary rounded up 42 Muslim youths from the Hashimpura village in Meerut, took them to the outskirts of the city, shot them, and left the bodies in an irrigation canal. On March 21st of 2015, the men accused of committing the massacre were acquitted on the basis of insufficient evidence. But then on October 31st of 2018, a higher court overturned that decision and the men were sentenced to life imprisonment. During a visit to West Berlin in a speech in front of the Brandenburg Gate, President Reagan challenged Soviet Premier Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down the Berlin Wall on June 12th. The Hippercore bombing took place on June 19th, in which the Basque terrorist group ETA perpetrated a car bomb attack at Hippercore Market in Barcelona, killing 21 and injuring 45. It was the deadliest act in the history of ETA. The damage at the scene was so extensive that several of the bodies could not be located until hours later, and some burned so severely that they could not be identified. On June 27, Philippines Airline Flight 206 crashed into a mountaintop near Baguio, Philippines, killing all 50 people on board. The cause of the crash was attributed to bad weather at the time. The Single European Act came into effect on July 1st, with European economic communities committing themselves to removing all remaining barriers to a common market by 1992. On August 9th, the Hoddle Street Massacre in Clifton Hill, Victoria State, Australia, took place when a 19-year-old went on a shooting rampage in this suburb of Melbourne, killing seven and injuring 19. Then 10 days later, the Hungerford Massacre took place on August 19th, in which 27 people died in Britain's first mass shooting, carried out by 27-year-old antiques dealer and handyman Michael Ryan. Northwest Airlines Flight 225 crashed shortly after takeoff from Detroit Metropolitan Airport on August 16th, killing all but one of the 156 people on board, a four-year-old girl who sustained serious injuries. The cause of the crash was attributed to pilot error, mismanagement of aircraft, and confusion. On September 13th, the Goyania accident took place, in which metal scrappers removed an old radiation source from an abandoned hospital in Goyania, Brazil, and caused the worst radiation incident ever in an urban area. It was subsequently handled by many people, resulting in four deaths. 
Of the 112,000 people tested for radioactive contamination, 249 were found to be contaminated. Topsoil had to be removed from several sites in the cleanup, and several houses were demolished. All objects from within those houses were seized and incinerated. Black Monday stock market levels fell sharply on October 19th in all of the 23 major world markets. Worldwide losses were estimated at USD $1.71 trillion. Despite fears of a repeat of the Great Depression, the market rallied immediately after the crash, gaining 102.27 points the next day and 186.64 points on October 22nd. It took two years for the market to recover completely. On October 19th, two commuter trains collided head-on in what was known as the Bentaro train crash in West Java, Indonesia, killing 102. The cause was attributed to human error. The King's Cross fire in the London Underground at the King's Cross St. Pancras tube station killed 31 people and injured 100 on November 18th. The fire started under a wooden escalator serving the Piccadilly line and erupted in a flashover into the underground ticket hall. Investigators determined that the cause of the fire was a lit match that had been dropped from the escalator that intensified suddenly what was called the previously unknown trench effect, a combination of circumstances that can rush a fire up inclined surfaces. On November 28, South African Airways Flight 295 crashed into the Indian Ocean off the coast of the island republic of Mauritius due to breaking up in midair because of a fire in the cargo hold, killing all 159 people on the plane. The cause of the fire was never determined. The next day, on November 29th, Korean Air Flight 858 was blown up over the Andaman Sea, killing all 115 people on board, with North Korean agents taking responsibility for the bombing. Then on December 7th, Pacific Southwest Airlines Flight 1771 crashed near Paso Robles, California, after a disgruntled employee shot his former supervisor on the flight, and then he proceeded to shoot both of the pilots. The first intifada began in the Gaza Strip and West Bank between Palestine and Israel on December 8th. The first intifada was a sustained series of Palestinian protests and violent riots against the Israeli occupation of Gaza and the West Bank since 1967. On the same day of December 8th, the Queen Street Massacre took place in Melbourne, Australia, involving a 22-year-old shooter who killed eight and injured five in a post office, then committed suicide by jumping from the 11th floor. Microsoft released Windows 2.0 on December 9th. In the world's worst peacetime sea disaster on December 20th, the passenger ferry MV Doña Paz sank after colliding with the oil tanker Vector 1 in the Philippines, believed to have killed an estimated 4,375 people. So what happened in 1988? On January 2nd, the Soviet Union began its program of economic restructuring known as perestroika, a political movement for reformation within the Communist Party and glasnost, meaning openness. The Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast voted to secede from the Azerbaijan Soviet Socialist Republic on February 20th and join the Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic, marking the beginning of the first Nagorno-Karabakh War. This was significant because it marked the start of the collapse of the Soviet Union and its process of internal disintegration with growing unrest in its constituent republics. The Halabja chemical attack was carried out on March 16th by Iraqi government forces towards the end of the Iran-Iraq war, the largest chemical weapon attack against a civilian populated area in history, resulting in the massacre of up to 5,000 Kurdish people and injuring up to 10,000. It took place 48 hours after the town was captured by the Iranian army in Iraqi Kurdistan. On April 5th, Kuwait Airways Flight 422 was hijacked while en route for Bangkok, Thailand to Kuwait, with the hijackers demanding the release of 17 Shiite Muslim prisoners held by Kuwait, and Kuwait refused to do so. This led to a 16-day siege across three continents and the death of two passengers. After eight years of fighting, the Soviet army began its withdrawal from Afghanistan on May 15th. Iran Air Flight 655 was shot down by a missile launched from the USS Vichens on July 3rd, killing 290 people on board. The reason for the downing of the plane has been disputed by the governments of the two countries. According to the United States, the Vichens crew had identified the Airbus as an Iranian Air Force jet fighter. According to Iran, the plane was negligently shot down. 
1996, the two governments reached a settlement in the International Court of Justice in which the United States recognized the incident as a terrible human tragedy and expressed deep regret over the loss of lives, but did not admit to legal liability or formally apologize to Iran and instead agreed to pay $61.8 million on a voluntary basis in compensation to the families of the Iranian victims. On July 6, the Piper Alpha oil production platform in the North Sea, northeast of Aberdeen, Scotland, was destroyed by explosions, killing 167 people. The accident was the worst offshore oil disaster in terms of lives lost and industry impact. The first reported medical waste on beaches in the greater New York area washed ashore on Long Island on July 6. Known as the syringe tide, it included hypodermic needles and syringes, possibly infected with the AIDS virus, with subsequent discoveries of the same medical waste on Coney Island, Brooklyn, and Monmouth, New Jersey. Al-Qaeda was founded by Osama bin Laden on August 11, a network of Islamic extremists and jihadists with the long-term goal of creating a unified and global caliphate. On August 20th, a ceasefire ended the Iran-Iraq war, with an estimated million lives lost. Just a little over two months after the Piper Alpha disaster, on September 22nd, a second oil production platform in the North Sea, the Ocean Odyssey, suffered a blowout and a fire, resulting in one death and 66 survivors rescued. The Jericho bus firebombing took place on October 30th, with five Israelis killed and five wounded in a Palestinian attack in the West Bank. On December 21st, Pan Am Flight 103 was blown up in midair, with wreckage falling onto a residential street in Lockerbie, Scotland, killing 270 people, including 11 people on the ground. After a three-year investigation by Scottish and American authorities, arrest warrants were issued for two Libyan nationals in November of 1991. Muammar Gaddafi handed over the two suspects after protracted negotiations and UN sanctions. Only one of the two men was sentenced for the bombing to a life sentence after being found guilty of 270 counts of murder in connection with the bombing. He was released from prison on compassionate grounds in 2009 because he was diagnosed with prostate cancer and died in 2012. The last year in this part of the series is 1989, a significant year in my life. College graduation, marriage, and a major move from the East Coast to the Southwest of the United States. On January 8th, British Midlands Flight 92 crashed on the motorway embankment between the M1 motorway and the A435 road near Kegworth while attempting to make an emergency landing at East Midlands Airport, leaving 47 dead and 74 with serious injuries. The cause of the crash was identified as the failure of one engine, followed by the erroneous shutdown of the other engine by the pilot. The Soviet-Afghan War ended on February 2nd after nine years of conflict. The conflict was a Cold War-era proxy war in which the Soviet Union and the unpopular and repressive government of the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan, which was Soviet-backed, fought in a guerrilla-style war against insurgent groups like the Mujahideen and smaller Maoist groups backed by Pakistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, China, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Between a half a million and two million civilians were killed and millions of Afghans fled the country as refugees as a result of the Soviet-Afghan War. On March 4th, a rail collision between two trains occurred just to the north of the Purley Railway Station in the London borough of Croydon, leaving five dead and 88 injured. As one of the trains left the station, it crossed from the slow lane to the fast lane, as scheduled, and was struck from behind. The train driver responsible for the collision passed a signal at danger, which was the equivalent of running a red light. He pled guilty to manslaughter and served four months of a 12-month sentence, with six months suspended. Tim Berners-Lee produced the proposal document that would become the blueprint for the World Wide Web on March 13th. The Exxon Valdez oil spill took place in Alaska on March 24th. The Exxon Shipping Company-owned oil tanker bound for Long Beach, California, struck Bly Reef in the Prince William Sound and spilled 10.8 million gallons of crude oil over the next few days. It was considered the world's worst environmental disaster. The oil spill eventually affected 1,300 miles or 2,100 kilometers of coastline, of which 200 miles or 320 kilometers were heavily or moderately oiled. A cause I remember being cited at the time of the disaster was that the tanker's captain had been drinking heavily that night, but he accused Exxon of trying to make him a scapegoat, and he was cleared at his 1990 trial after witnesses testified he was sober around the time of the accident.
On April 5th, the Polish government and the Solidarity Trade Union signed an agreement restoring solidarity to legal status as a result of the Polish Roundtable talks and to hold democratic elections on June 4th, which initiated the 1989 revolution and the overthrow of communism in Central Europe. The death of former Communist Party General Secretary and economic reformer Hu Yaobang in China on April 15th after a fatal heart attack sparked the beginning of the Tiananmen Square protests when more than 100,000 students took to the streets of Beijing to mourn him and called for a more transparent system and an end to corruption. The Hillsborough disaster also took place on April 15th, one of the biggest tragedies in European football. It was a fatal human crush that took place during a football match between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest at Hillsborough Stadium in Sheffield, South Yorkshire, in England. Apparently, in an attempt to ease overcrowding at the entrance turnstiles before the kickoff, the police match commissioner ordered the exit gate C opened, leading to an influx of even more supporters into the two standing-only pens allocated for the Liverpool Football Club supporters. This led to a crowding in the pens and the crush, which resulted in 96 deaths and 766 injuries. While the Taylor Report of 1990 found the main cause of the disaster was failure of control by the South Yorkshire Police, the Director of Public Prosecutions ruled there was no evidence to justify prosecutions of any individuals or institutions. The main future safety outcome was the elimination of fenced standing terraces in favor of all-seater stadiums in the top two tiers of English football. The San Bernardino train disaster was a combination of two separate but related incidents that occurred in San Bernardino, California. The first was a runaway Southern Pacific freight locomotive derailment on an elevated curve and plowed into a residential area on Duffy Street. The conductor, head-end brakeman, and two residents were killed in the crash. The second related incident was the failure of the Calney pipeline that was damaged during the rail crash cleanup, causing it to explode on May 25th, killing two more people and destroying 11 more houses and 21 cars. More than one million Chinese protesters marched through Beijing between May 14th and 17th, demanding greater democracy, leading to a crackdown. The Chinese government declared martial law in Beijing on May 20th. I graduated from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, on June 3rd with a bachelor's degree in social work and psychology, with an emphasis on geriatric social work and I was a geriatric social worker and activities professional for 13 years, primarily in a long-term care and skilled nursing facility setting. I got out of this field permanently in 2003. On June 4th, a crackdown took place in Beijing as the army approached the square, and the final standoff was covered on live TV. In Poland on June 4th, Solidarity's victory in the elections was the first of many anti-communist revolutions in 1989 in Central and Eastern Europe. An unknown Chinese protester stood in front of a column of military tanks in Tiananmen Square on June 5th, temporarily halting the tanks. The incident took place on the morning after Chinese troops fired upon pro-democracy students who had been protesting in the square since April 15th of 1989. On June 7th, Suriname Airways Flight 764, originating from the Netherlands, crashed in Paramaribo, Suriname, killing 178 of the 187 people on board and the deadliest aviation disaster in Suriname's history. We are told that the accident was the result of pilot error stemming from significant deficiencies in the crew's training and judgment. Some members of the Surinamese football team playing professionally in the Netherlands, known as the Colorful Eleven, were among the dead. I married U.S. Army retired Sergeant David Gibson on June 10th of 1989 in front of all my family and friends and forever changed the course of my life in getting me to the place of awareness where I am today. The following day, I moved from the Baltimore, Washington area forever to Clovis, New Mexico with my new husband, the nearest place to his family in Hereford, Texas with a military installation at Cannon Air Force Base. The Tel Aviv-Jerusalem bus 405 suicide attack, the first Palestinian suicide attack, on Israel took place on July 6th by a member of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. The attacker seized control of the steering wheel of the bus and drove it off a steep ravine. Ironically, the suicide attacker survived along with 27 others, but 16 people did not. On July 19th, United Airlines Flight 232 crashed as a result of uncontrolled engine failure and loss of flight controls in Sioux City, Iowa, killing 122 of the 296 crew and passengers on board with 184 survivors. The accident was considered a prime example of successful crew resource management because of how the flight was landed, the high number of survivors, and how the crew handled the emergency. 
The Alice Springs hot air balloon crash killed 13 people on August 13th. Two hot air balloons collided near Alice Springs in Australia's Northern Territory, causing the lower one of them to crash to the ground. The Northern Territory Supreme Court sentenced Michael Sanby, the pilot of the upper balloon, to two years in jail with a three-month non-parole period after being found guilty of committing a dangerous act, but not guilty on 13 charges of manslaughter. Sanby's conviction was subsequently overturned on appeal. On August 20th, 51 people died after a pleasure boat was hit twice by the dredger Bowbell in the River Thames between the Cannon Street Railway Bridge and the Southwark Bridge in London in what was known as the Marchioness Disaster, after the name of the pleasure boat. The investigation after the disaster considered it likely that the dredger struck the pleasure boat from the rear, causing the pleasure boat to turn to the left, where it was hit again, pushed along, and turned over, going under the Bowbell's bow. It took less than a minute for the Marchioness to completely sink, and 24 bodies were found within the ship when it was raised. The captain of the Bowbell was charged with failing to have an effective lookout on the vessel, but two cases against him ended with a hung jury. Colombia's cocaine traffickers declared war against the government on August 24th and unleashed a wave of bombings, arson, and terror in retaliation for official efforts to extradite drug kingpins to the United States for trial. A commando group financed by the cocaine cartels blew up the headquarters of two political parties, torched the homes of two prominent politicians, and issued a statement threatening government officials, business leaders, and judges. On September 14th, the standard gravure shooting took place in Louisville, Kentucky. Shooter Joseph Westbecker, a pressman, entered his former workplace at the printing company Standard Gravure, killing eight and injuring 12 before killing himself, resulting in the deadliest mass shooting in Kentucky's history. Wes Becker had a long history of psychiatric illness and was treated for it in hospitals at least three times between 1978 and 1987. The murders resulted in a high-profile lawsuit against Eli Lilly and company, manufacturers of the antidepressant drug Prozac, which Wes Becker had begun taking during the month prior to his shooting rampage. The case was resolved by settlement rather than jury verdict. The French airline UTA Flight 772 was a scheduled passenger flight that exploded and crashed near Bilma in Niger after a bomb exploded in flight, killing all 171 on board, and debris from the aircraft's explosion was spread over hundreds of square miles of desert. The deadliest aviation incident to occur in Niger, the Islamic Jihad Organization claimed responsibility, and six Libyan terrorists were tried in absentia since Muammar Gaddafi did not allow them to be extradited. The motive for the bombing was said to be revenge against France for supporting Chad against the expansionist policies of Libya towards Chad. The Bhagalpur violence, a major incidence of religious violence between Hindus and Muslims, started in the Bhagalpur district of Bihar state in India on October 24th, killing an estimated 1,000 people and displacing an estimated 50,000. The killing, arson, and looting lasted for another two months. Prior to the outbreak of the riots, two rumors about the killing of Hindu students started circulating. One rumor stated that nearly 200 Hindu university students had been killed by Muslims, while another rumor stated that 31 Hindu boys had been murdered and their bodies dumped in a well at the Sanskrit college. Apart from these, the political and criminal rivalries in the area also played a role in inciting the riots. East Germany opened checkpoints in the Berlin Wall on November 9th, allowing its citizens to travel freely to West Germany for the first time in decades. On December 1st, a military coup was attempted in the Philippines against the government of Philippine President Corazon Aquino that was crushed by U.S. government intervention, ending on December 12th. The DAS, or Administrative Department of Security Building, was truck-bombed in Bogota, Colombia on December 6, killing 57 and injuring 2,248 in an attempt to assassinate General Miguel Maya Marquez, director of the DAS, who escaped unharmed. The Medellin drug cartel led by Pablo Escobar was believed to be behind the bombing. The DAS bombing was the last in a long series of attacks that targeted Colombian politicians, officials, and journalists in 1989. The Montreal massacre took place on the same day as the DAS building bombing, where a gunman killed 14 women at the Polytechnical School in Montreal, and 10 other women and 4 men were injured. The gunman, Mark Lapine, targeted women, stating that he was fighting feminism. After 20 minutes of a shooting spree through the building, he killed himself. It was the deadliest mass shooting in modern Canadian history. The incident led to more stringent gun control laws in Canada. 
The U.S. invasion of Panama, codenamed Operation Just Cause, was launched on December 20th in an attempt to overthrow Panamanian President Manuel Noriega and lasted until late January of 1990. As a result of the operation, Noriega surrendered to the U.S. military and President-elect Guillermo Andara was sworn into office. Here's what I am seeing thus far in seeing history with new eyes since 1945, with an eye towards uncovering the patterns that give us insight into the world we live in today. Between 1945 and 1960, there were patterns of events and people being manipulated for particular outcomes, benefiting the world powers at the expense of other countries and their people, and at the same time, deceiving us about what was really going on to gain our consent, like with the examples of partitioning one country into two, setting up two different political systems, and then instigating them to fight each other, in the case of Korea and Vietnam, and the inherent brutality against humanity of communism, with Russia and China forcing citizens onto collectivized farms and subsequent famine, resulting in the deaths of millions in both countries. And the beginning of the Cold War from around the formation of the Truman Doctrine in 1947, an American foreign policy which had the stated purpose of containing Soviet geopolitical expansion until the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. It was called cold because there was no direct fighting between the United States and the Soviet Union, but engaged instead in proxy wars by supporting different sides of major regional conflicts. This translated to the capitalist United States and the communist Soviet Union funding and providing all all manner of support to the opposing sides of all of these proxy wars that happened, making all of the death and destruction possible in the first place. Between 1961 and 1980, communists took down hereditary rulers in Cambodia and Ethiopia, as well as the Islamic Revolution taking down the hereditary Shah of Iran in 1979 to replace him with the Islamic Republic of Iran, leading to massive suffering, death, and repression in these three countries. Every bit of all of this information signifies to me that who or whatever is behind all of this does not value any human life and instead has sought to violently destroy it. I was born in July of 1963 and grew up in suburban Maryland outside of Washington, D.C., several months before the assassination of John F. Kennedy. My vivid memories of events from the late 1960s and early 1970s include making sit-upons when I was a brownie at the ages of seven and eight stuffed with the Washington Post or Washington Star containing articles about the Vietnam War, the 1972 Munich Olympics and the attack in which eight terrorists took nine members of the Israeli Olympic team hostage. The gas crisis that started in October of 1973 as a result of an OPEC oil embargo. The Vietnamese refugee crisis, because a lot of them came to the Washington, D.C. area and lived with people I knew, so I got to know some of them. And the Watergate hearings, which opened in May of 1973 and dominated the television programming for the next two weeks, which was really annoying for a nine-year-old looking for something else to watch instead. And then fast forward my life to doing this research now and really realizing that all hell broke loose all over the earth starting in 1981 in a way I did not back then. The year I graduated from high school and the decade that began my adulthood. Multiple assassination attempts and assassinations, AIDS, explosions in mines, frequent plane crashes, and planes blown out of the air by bombs and fires, many massacres and atrocities against innocent civilian populations, regular people being blown up in discos and restaurants, and traumatically dying at theaters and sporting events, terrorist hijackings and suicide bombings, a multitude of sinking ships and train wrecks, single-shooter mass shooting events, and on and on and on. And that's just the 1980s so far. Certainly some of the incidents attributed to accidents could have actually been accidents. But back then, we didn't even think about the possibility they could have been intentionally caused for maximum psychological effect. Our collective human consciousness has been continuously seeded from 1981 with the notion that we could meet a violent, horrible death randomly at any given moment by forces beyond our control, and genocide was committed on large numbers of people and populations where there was armed conflict around the world, and that somehow all of this is normal. Over the years, our collective consciousness has been raised about false flags, defined as operations committed with the intent of disguising the actual source of responsibility and pinning blame on a second party. It is also interesting that from the beginning of the 1980s forward was when the personal computer and internet came into being in our lives, ultimately allowing us to instantaneously connect with each other all over the world and bypass mainstream media for news and information. Definitely a very important development for our mass awakening and a way out of the tyranny and dystopian nightmare that was planned for us. All of this so far leads me to ask this question. 
Has the Earth's population been experiencing a very calculated and undeclared psychological war based on terror and trauma against all of humanity for the last 40 years to bring us to what is going on against humanity in the world in which we live in today? 